Uh, welcome back to this uh, segment of Ecosystem TV covering the leadership dialogue um, on the Asia sentiment for 2023. In the previous segment, we talked about the macroeconomic trends. We covered issues like purpose. We talked about the importance of how people are actually going to help us shape our organizations going forward. But we're now going to talk about technology disruption and the various themes that, um, uh, that are part of it. Now, Emmet, in Asia, there are about 400 unicorns. Now, when people think of unicorns, people think of them as tech companies. The way I look at unicorns are they're digital natives that are actually playing across every industry. Do you see that spirit of innovation showing up in large enterprises? And, and do you have any good examples of that? Yeah, look, um, firstly, you started with startups, and that lights my eyes, lights my mind. 42% of the startup infrastructure and network is actually in Asia. And CB Insights released a, a report where 31% of global funding on startups went to Asia, just one point behind uh, the US. So we are very meaningful, and we are creating companies at scale that are driving innovation uh, and driving solutions that did not exist. I, if you think about retail commerce at scale, the retail commerce at scale is an Asian innovation. Uh, frankly, it was uh, here where uh, innovation is happening in the space of gaming. Uh, it's here that innovation is happening in the space of financial disruption of reaching micro SMEs and reaching you know uh, millions and hundreds and millions of, of uh, citizens. So, so what Asia actually has created a disadvantage into an advantage. In many aspects, we were behind the curve. You know, Asia was a manufacturing base. Uh, you know, and now. Uh, what I say, make in Asia to born in Asia. And born in Asia is actually becoming more and more real. Um, retail, distribution, like you said, commerce, healthcare. Uh, the healthcare access that is being created in Asia through, through uh, uh, digital far exceeds anywhere in the, in the world. Uh, look at Bangladesh as an economy, right? Microfinance, digitally enabled, is probably the most penetrated anywhere in the world. True. Think about uh, user identification. 1.4 billion Indians have a digital ID. So uh, I think we're, uh, we're at this point here where we can share with the world lessons that help transform at scale. Asia has now developed a mindset to enable global digital progress. And that is what is super energizing for me. And isn't that so relevant given the large aspirational economy we have here as well? It is, I mean, two thirds of the world's population lives here and it's the most diverse in terms of language, uh, skill, uh, geographic uh, uh, distribution and economic opportunities. Absolutely. And I've got a question that ties in what you just said, Emma, than what you actually said earlier. And I'm going to actually pose this to Paddy uh, around corporate venturing, because one of the statements you made in the previous segment that we had uh, was, we don't have enough talent to drive innovation, right? One of the statements you made right now was 42% uh, of the startup ecosystem is based in Asia. So, so Paddy, do you see a fitment between large corporates looking at working with startups and applying the corporate venturing path to address and augment that talent need. That's a very good. Uh, that's a that's that that makes a lot of sense. And I think uh, not limited to this partnership. I think there is a need for a uh, for a stronger ecosystem that extends to the government, extends to the the public policy, extends uh, also to uh, the university. So I think any sort of this partnership can be really fundamental in creating that ecosystem, and the fungibility of talent that we can uh, do and. Uh, in that sense, also, uh, talent in digital is, is, is going to be defined um, in a lot of ways quite different from the past. So it's not the erstwhile IT that we're talking about. And digital no more is about what you do, the disciplines that you do around, say, data science or cloud um, or, or machine learning or AI. It's really digital is really about who you are rather than what you do. You've obviously got a customer base across Asia. Are you seeing a big role for corporate venturing across the region? 
I do, but first let me, let me explain why. And uh, Hamid gave some color about the relevance of the ecosystem of uh, startups in, in this region. Let me add a little bit uh, to, to, to this color. Uh, in third quarter of 2022, Asia overtook US in terms of number of deals funded and overtook Europe in terms of mega deals funded, deals that are above $100 million. So it's absolutely uh, astonishing the, the speed at which the, the ecosystem of startups is, is growing in, in this region. And we know there are more than uh, 60,000 uh, startups in India. Uh, we know that uh, Seoul, for the first time, is amongst the top 10 largest ecosystem in the world. Uh, we know that in Singapore there is a thriving ecosystem of startups and most importantly accelerators. There are only in Singapore 200 accelerators. And we know that uh, uh, in the rest of Asia, uh, we have emerging ecosystems that are more and more relevant, Kuala Lumpur, Vietnam, uh, Jakarta, to name, uh, to name a few. So in this context, of course, for corporate, it is imperative uh, to do corporate venturing and to constantly look at their business model, their value chain, and make decisions in terms of uh, build, acquire, or partner with uh, these disruptors. What we do in Kindrel is uh, uh, we are tackling corporate venturing, of course. Uh, we, we currently have in the pipeline more than 250 uh, startups that are, are under due diligence. We already onboarded uh, more than 60 in just one year of life. And, um, but we're trying to do corporate venturing in a, in a different way. And the two defining characteristics for us, for us are, first, uh, it's really a cross-functional effort. Uh, sometimes the risk of corporate venturing is to have a team that is isolated from the rest of the enterprise. Mm -hmm. Having a cross-functional uh, effort really enables us to, to drive faster value to our clients and, and to incorporate faster uh, startups in, uh, in, in how we work and the solution we deploy for our clients. And the second element is uh, we are very strict in terms of uh, looking at uh, uh, startups that align to uh, UN SDG goals. And I think we are, uh, uh, this is a way for us uh, to leverage our scale and reach uh, to accelerate uh, the impact uh, that we can make in the world uh, by recruiting and onboarding and working with, partnering with uh, startups that align to our values and to the S uh, UN SDG goals. For 2023 and beyond in the, sh in the short to midterm, what are the technologies you're foreseeing that will help us leapfrog? Uh, we are seeing uh, across the board uh, across the enterprise, across the clients we are working with, a uh, uh, few technologies that are being prioritized. Uh, between 65 to 70 percent of uh, uh, companies are uh, really looking uh, very deeply or adopting uh, 5G, Edge, Blockchain, and Metaverse. These are the key technologies that are uh, uh, driving uh, innovation. I think it is going to be imperative for, uh, for companies to drive uh, um, to drive adoption that is not technology-led, but is really uh, customer-led. And the biggest challenge that CIOs and tech leaders are facing, as we see it, is not just in deployment, but also ensuring that they're fully aligned with, with the desired business outcome. Right? Yeah. So you've seen a number of these large transformation deals. Uh, what is your perspective in terms of the right ingredients you need to have in play um, to, be, to have a successful digital transformation program. Yeah, uh, technology is only a minute to an end. So I think a uh, few, few ingredients, few uh, a recipe for, uh, for success based on our experience. The first one is uh, always start uh, with the business outcomes in mind. Whether it's about uh, improving the customer experience, uh, it's about uh, impl improving uh, uh, employee productivity or uh, driving growth uh, through new business model. I think uh, it's uh, of paramount to have clarity on what are the, the business outcomes you want to achieve. And I really think there is a case for driving more uh, technology conversation in the board. I don't think today in the board there is enough uh, technology discussion. We know for a fact that technology is a key enabler of transformation, both at the application and infrastructural space. But I don't think uh, uh, see the CEO is bringing enough of this technology conversation within the board and making it a key strategic imperative. So that's the first one. 
the second element is uh, uh, CIO, they really need to accelerate on the um, modernization of the IT estate, accelerating the, uh, the migration, the transition to hybrid environment, and really uh, driving a modernization both at the application and infrastructural uh, level uh, to, to increase agility and enable growth. Uh, the third element is uh, uh, scaling intelligent IT automation, uh, which is going to drive simplification and efficiencies, cost reduction, and most importantly, is going to free up resources from, uh, from uh, manual, tedious job and uh, um, allowing them to do more meaningful jobs. All of the above while building the, a secure and resilient enterprise, uh, which is becoming a priority uh, for, uh, for CIOs and for, uh, and for business leaders alike. And it's becoming more and more also a source of uh, differentiation and competitive advantage. I um, think I'm going to pick up on that last point you just made, Luca, and um, point a question to, uh, to Paddy. I think you pretty much covered it very holistically, but I want to actually pick up the skills piece with you, Paddy, because um, you know skills, I think, is also one of the biggest challenges in large digital transformation programs because every organization cannot have all the skills to achieve those goals. So do you think that organizations are recognizing that and the leaders are able to focus enough on ensuring that they're able to augment skills externally when they need to, to bridge some of those skills gaps? Yeah, I think that's a, that's a pertinent question staring at and I'm, I'm also going to sort of emphasize on uh, what Luca, Luca just mentioned about um, one, uh, having uh, technology to sort of um, free up resources. And I think as I was sort of consuming that, I just wanted to make sure that there is, uh, uh, there is enough of attention to sort of synergize the people dimension and the technology dimension and how this can be synergized and sort of going together. So there is no unintended nervousness coming around. The fact that technology is going to replace people that's really about because there's abundant evidence to suggest that if this is upfront sort of modeled together, there is so much of an opportunity to optimize um, it um, as such. Uh, on the skills piece, uh, clearly there is, um, there's going to be some amount of pressure that we have to anticipate because not every organization's center of gravity is a virtual model. With us also sort of changing the workforce models, getting more um, flexible uh, models, we've got to see what sort of impact that is going to have on the dig digital talent because digital talent is not limited to technology firms. Whether we talk about agri, whether we talk about all of these uh, new age technologies that you spoke about are no more yesteryear's IT, they're pretty uh, forward looking. and. Agribusiness is looking at cloud to um, uh, you know different industries. So I think it's very important to uh, start to create that uh, that synergy early on and uh, look at learning modalities that can be upfront, taking into account um, how this can be sort of um, worked um, early on. Oh, wonderful. Thank you.